and it could be chronic fatigue from living with chronic illness or, or you could be living with a chronic fatigue where the doctors just don't know what is causing it. I'm going to share some of the hacks and tips that I've learned along the way of how to help ourselves when we have chronic fatigue. So what's the point of all this? Well, what you want to try to do, or the reasoning behind it is that you're saving a tiny little piece of energy over here, a little bit over there, a little bit over there. Maybe during the course of the day, you know, you save, you save 20%, you shave a little bit, 10% off that and it leaves you with some energy to do something for yourself that you actually enjoy Possibly you want to use that energy to see a friend or just chat with a friend on the telephone Because this way hopefully you've conserved enough of that precious little energy to do something Where you know, you haven't been able to speak for a long time because you've been so tired You really just haven't been able to talk properly so now you get to have a telephone call with your friend and enjoy yourself a little bit. Or maybe you wanna, you've got a pet and you wanna take your pet for a walk. Or you've got a hobby that you haven't been able to do for a while. So you really wanna do your crafting or something that you've been too exhausted. And the idea behind it, the logic behind it is that doing that activity gives you a little boost, gives you, you know, it lifts you up rather than just being about the basics of that unpleasant kind of process that we have to go through where we think okay how am i going to actually function today so we can't all just be about functioning and uh, you gotta save some of your energy too for stuff that actually makes you feel good you may have known about all this for many many years in which case you're clearly a lot smarter than i am step number one um, keep emergency food by your bed and emergency water. Um, this is for when you're too tired to get from your bed to the kitchen. Um, but obviously you might you might still actually be really hungry, depending on you know the nature of your well, depending on how your day is going. You know, maybe you managed to have breakfast and you went downhill in the afternoon. Um so you know, the breakfast is kind of seeing you through so you, you you're feeling horrendous but it's okay because at least you had some breakfast you see what I mean but maybe you didn't manage to have any, much breakfast and now it's got to the afternoon and you've gone really downhill and you're like oh my god you know I can't make it to my kitchen I use a little airtight you know Tupperware container just get yourself a Tupperware container I use nuts because they've got protein and they're filling obviously it depends on your own ability you might have constricted ability to swallow um, when you go really downhill and get really exhausted um, so nuts obviously would not be an appropriate thing for you to have but what you could do is maybe keep a shake by your bed in like a, a sealed bottle that would be a good thing with shakes you can also talk to your family doctor or your GP I've been prescribed meal replacement shakes in the past by my family doctor and they were they're they're nice they're ginger flavored and they're great because you just add water it, they do have a lot of ingredients in them so for those of you with dietary restrictions you know, they might cause you a bit of like a searching through the ingredients you know to see if to see if there's anything in there like they might have lactose you could be lactose intolerant well this is the great thing about the internet isn't it like you we can go on there and have a search and there's bound to be a substitute out there you can get there and you can come up with alternatives another little tip would maybe keep something fizzy beside your bed if you can or because even if you're too exhausted to eat something sometimes the fizz can kind of perk you up a little bit you know you may have dietary restrictions like you might have diabetes or something so you don't want to be drinking sweet fizzy drinks but even i mean i would recommend even like a can of sparkling water or a bottle of sparkling water you just got to make sure to keep the container small and light um, because if you're very fatigued obviously it's going to be quite difficult to lift it up and it's also an idea depending again on how your swallowing is to keep a straw uh, beside your bed to make it easier to swallow the next one and this is a biggie I think leave stuff out okay 
And what I mean by that is just leave your stuff out. Don't fold it up and put it away. Okay. Now this is going to be a little bit difficult for those of us, myself included, who were kind of a little bit uptight about things being tidy and neat. Um, I, I might have a slight track record of wanting things to be, you know, folded. I'm sort of a folder and a but the reality of the situation is that we have to. You might be watching this and thinking, mm, you're not telling me anything I don't already know. But if you're new to the experience of living with a chronic condition and chronic fatigue, maybe if you know that you're better at some certain times of the day, use that time of day and lay your clothes out for the next, for the next day. And hey, you know, if you're having a really bad day, you got to think about whether it's a sensible use of energy to maybe stop and just leave your pajamas on and not get dressed. Because if you don't have the capacity that day to dress, then you're not going to be able to feed yourself. Well, coming to clothing next. Hmm. Loose and light clothing is going to be your friend here. You want to reduce um, the effort involved of getting the clothes on your body. A lot of women's tops in particular require you to do a sort of gymnastic move where you get both of your arms dead straight and you push both of them up through. There's no give. <laughs> There's no give sideways in the top, right? There's no zip or anything. You have to get the thing, you have to get both your arms straight up in the air and put them through the um, armholes and then pull the top down over your head. It's madness. Forget it. Charity box. It can be difficult to wear like light clothing um, if it's wintry. In winter, temperatures plummet. Unfortunately, it just means we have to try and wear sort of heavier fabrics, don't we? We've got to pile on the jumpers and we've got to pile on um, layers. So unfortunately, yeah, winter's not really a friend to the um, chronic illness patient in that regard. Next, we've got the shower seat or any kind of shower aid, which makes it easier. You can also get bath aids, so they make it easier to get in and out of the bath or shower, but they also a lot of them, because you're seated, they save energy. So if you're in chronic pain, in my experience, you know, having a shower seat doesn't actually reduce the amount of pain involved in bathing. But what it does do is just save a little bit of that energy, precious, precious energy. Um, and you can then use that energy and put it towards doing something else. And this is another tip about leaving stuff out. If you can, in your kitchen, just leave out your pots and pans. Just leave them out. Don't put them in a cupboard. Because every time you open a cupboard door, like if you, actually, if you think about it, you know, when you're trying to prepare even a small snack or a super basic thing out of the fridge, you know, you do a lot of this kind of thing. There's a lot of opening fridge doors taking packages out, opening the packages. You know, I've talked in other videos about poor grip strength. And I don't know what is going on with the supermarkets at the moment, but some of their packaging is just brutal. It's brutal to try to open it. I was trying to open something like some kind of, you know, they have a plasticky, it's kind of pointless um, bag around some vegetables. I think it was peppers, like bell peppers. And you would have thought that there was radioactive waste in there. The packet was so difficult to open. And that's across the board, you know. You're probably not using that many. It's not like you're making big, elaborate meals where, you know, you've got every pot and pan in the kitchen out. Like, let's say most of us, if we're lucky, we have one or two pots and pans that are suitable for us to use. So just leave them out. Or a nice option as well is, I had one kitchen where I had open shelving. You may know um, someone who has them in their home. Maybe I can dig out a photo of it, but it can look quite quite attractive and it's orderly and still neat. But then you don't have to open any doors and like be reaching in to get your, get your stuff. Oh, I like this tip, which is from an NHS guide that I found from one of the hospitals here in England. 
I'm going to post it in the description below. It's an NHS occupational therapy guide and they suggest sliding things along the worktops. So if you've got a, like a pot, you know, cooking pot, a saucepan full of water that you want to put on the hob, just slide it. Slide it from the sink across your hob to the, um, across your worktop to the hob. Let me try another strategy, another idea here, which is not only can you reduce the weight of your pots and pans, or where you make them a little bit easier in terms of where you store them, but you can also maybe, you know, change the type of food that you eat. So you can use dehydrated noodles, for example, that, you know, you just have to add water to them. They don't require any cooking. I use them a lot. I also use raw food that you don't have to cook so you can just eat it straight out of your refrigerator okay so you can make salads there are a lot of vegetables that don't require any chopping and can be eaten raw um, just be a little bit careful about things like green peppers and potatoes things like that and beans all of those need to be cooked because they contain indigestible ingredients they need the cooking process breaks down the uh whatever's in them that's indigestible but lots of other things can be eaten Baby carrots, okay, they may be a rip-off, but they're a healthy snack. Uh, so think about things like that. Think about ways around. These are all just ideas that I'm, you know, throwing at you. But you got to try to think of ways to save a little energy here and save a little bit more over there. Then hopefully that gives you enough to do something just a little bit more fun. I didn't really get some of these hacks until I had like proper sessions with an occupational therapist. Unfortunately, like nobody told me what occupational therapy was. None of the many professionals that I have met and been treated by over the years ever told me that occupational therapy even existed. So I had to find out about it all by myself on the internet. And um, yeah, through sort of a patient support charity uh, here in the UK, which helps people who have hypermobility conditions. And through them, I then found out about this practitioner who was doing videos on YouTube and that practitioner then interviewed an occupational therapist. I sincerely hope that these videos could be of some help to you. Those are some of the hacks you guys for dealing with chronic fatigue, really hope you like this video if you do please subscribe and uh i hope to see you on the next one